The Makati Kati in the Kalahari Desert of Africa was once an enormous lake. It stretches some 65,000 square kilometers, about the same size as present-day Lake Victoria. The basin is seriously old. Things have remained in their resting places upon the bed of this dry lake for many thousands of years, giving researchers from around the world the opportunity to find things out about our distant past that may have otherwise been impossible. Oxford University's researchers of the School of Geography and Environment, for example, have unearthed new evidence in the Botswana region that suggests the area has endured many drastic climate changes throughout its long history. Upwards of 600 different artifacts have now been recovered and cataloged. The research was apparently prompted by the rediscovery of what are believed to be the world's largest stone tools, thought to have vanished over 25 years ago. The discovery of the four giant axes had not been scientifically reported. It seems the collection was intended to disappear, but was instead thankfully buried within archives until now. Four giant stone hand axes, measuring over 30 centimeters in length and of an unknown age, stone tools suitable for men far larger than we are today. Professor David Thomas, head of the School of Geography and the Environment at the University of Oxford, said, quote, Many of the tools were found on the dry lake floor, not around its edge, which challenges the view that big lakes were only attractive to humans when they were full of water. As water levels in the lake went down, or during times when they fluctuated seasonally, wild animals would have congregated around the resulting watering holes. It's likely that early human populations would have seen this area as a prolific hunting ground, when food resources in the region were more concentrated than at times when the regional climate was wetter and food was more plentiful and the lake was full of water." Co-researcher Dr. Sally Burrow has dated the sediment and shorelines of the lake basin, which has shown that the lake was filled with water on multiple occasions in the last 250,000 years. New research began in 2010 and funded by the Leverholm Trust and is investigating possible links between the lake basin and the Zambezi River while initial discussions are in hand for setting up a major international geo-archaeological program to further unravel the complexities of the lake bed. Although these stone tools suggest early man co-inhabited the basin with a giant species of humans, the researchers are clearly distancing themselves from such postulation at this moment in time. The Ulfberts, a group of medieval swords found within Europe Dating between the 9th and 11th centuries, the blade faces are inlaid with the inscription Ulfbert with a cross on either side. The word turns out to have been a Frankish personal name. It somehow has become the basis logo, a trademark of sorts, used by multiple bladesmiths for several centuries in their impressive attempts to make the hardest, most impressive swords of the era. About 100 to 170 Ulfbert swords are known to exist. Yet the origins of the name remain somewhat of an enigma. However, we dare to postulate that the name may have originated with, with this sword in particular. A sword which these bladesmiths may have been attempting to replicate and indeed figure out how it was made. A Nova National Geographic documentary titled Secrets of the Viking Sword, which first aired in 2012, actually took a look at this enigmatic sword's metallurgical composition. The Ulfbert sword has almost no slag content within its composition, and it has a carbon content three times that of other metals of the time. Carbon found to be a great addition in strengthening steel, creating a metal known as crucible steel. A critical discovery, something which made England famous some 800 years after this sword's creation. In the process of forging iron, the ore must be heated to 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, this will bring the metal to a liquid molten state, allowing blacksmiths to reduce impurities called slag. However, medieval technology did not allow iron to be heated to such a high temperature. Thus, the slag was removed by pounding it out, a far less effective method. Modern blacksmith Richard Furrer of Wisconsin spoke to Nova about the difficulties of making such a sword. Furrer is described in the documentary as one of the few people on the planet who has the skills needed to try to reproduce the Ulfbert by hand. To do it right, it is the most complicated thing I know how to make, he said. He commented on how the Ulfbert maker would have been regarded as possessing magical powers. 
To be able to make a weapon from dirt is a pretty powerful thing, he said. But to make a weapon at this time within history that could bend such without breaking, stay so sharp, and weigh so little, would be regarded as supernatural. Furrer spent days of continuous, painstaking work, forging a similar sword. He used medieval technology, although it required highly unconventional ways, never before suspected or documented. The tiniest flaw or mistake, turning the sword into a piece of scrap metal. He declared his success at the end as more relief than joy. Who was the maker of this sword? How did they know how to make it? The mystery surrounding this out-of-place artifact persists to this day. We have long conjectured that many ancient ruins found throughout the world are not what they seem. Attributed to groups within known and permitted history, we feel, however, that the evidence to suggest that they were, in fact, relics of an as-yet unearthed advanced civilization is now overwhelming. Many sites we cover escape modern understanding or explanation. Gigantic multi-ton megaliths, often somehow mysteriously quarried and transported from quarry sites sometimes hundreds of miles away from where we find them today. Such realities are undeniable, and the lack of any explanation as to how our more primitive ancient ancestors accomplished such tasks, we feel, remains elusive due to said site's origins actually being a far more capable, far more progressive, now lost civilization who were clearly once capable of such incredible feats. However, although many sites are often attributed to what we perceive were mere re-inhabitants and the archaeological footprint that they left behind, excavated and permitted to be studied in depth, pinned as the creators of said sites. However, the relic we are focusing on in the following video, an ancient artifact left by those who possibly created the site itself. Majorca, a favorite with holidaymakers, yet alas, what many do not pursue while on the island is the inexplicable stone megaliths which litter its tropical shores. Academically attested as a 3200-year-old relic, we feel, however, that the sword, although clearly of a remarkable preservation, is in fact far older than this, and those who have investigated the site and said relic have concluded that the only possible origin of this incredible object was that of a now lost yet once highly advanced ancient civilization. Now known as the Taliot Sword, it is an astonishing ancient weapon, once somehow made far within antiquity, created to incredibly high standards, and we feel the reason the sword has survived so long is merely testament to the quality of the sword and indeed the past abilities of its creator. Recently discovered by a team of experts digging at the archaeological site known as Talio de Seralda Se Abelis, found within Puig Poyent, a municipality on Mallorca. The site is comprised of several stone megaliths, which are claimed to date back anywhere from 1000 to 6000 BC. We, however, hypothesize that the sword is far older than even these unusually generous, academically dated estimates. The sword was found near one of the stone megaliths, known locally as a Taliot, hence the sword's name. Built by the mysterious Taliotic culture, which we feel is the name given to lost civilization that many funded individuals continue to try and dismiss, claiming that it was located within permitted timelines. Labeled by some as the Spanish Excalibur, it is undoubtedly an incredible artifact and one which sheds precious light upon the capabilities of a now lost civilization. Work is now underway at the site and is pegged to continue for the next few decades. Initially explored by historian and archaeologist Guillaume Bordoy in the 1950s, it was in mid-September, as the researchers were readying the museum at the site, that the team found the sword. Who made the Taliot sword? How old are the megalithic sites upon the island of Majorca? Are we looking at an artifact left by a now lost civilization? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. 
There is a smorgasbord of ancient antiquities, along with the many objects left thereafter, which has fueled a heated debate smoldering within the field of history, fought out and kept smoldering at its core by two opposing sides of considerable clout. Those in support of, and it must be noted, heavily funded by current academic paradigms, and those with incredibly sturdy examples of supporting evidence of now lost ancient high technology, along with vast areas of antiquity itself, and the actions undertaken within for which their academic opposition simply cannot produce an answer for. These objects, or uparts particularly, becoming thorns in the side of currently taught historical theorems. Academia in response have, through competent research, the re-examining of witness testimonies, along with the grilling of some of these said witnesses, even polygraphy being undertaken upon the supposed discoverers of these items all in an active attempt to disprove this alternative timeline of history which they claim as impossible, a history which these objects are displaying existed. Remarkable relics, easily identifiable as human implements, have been found in nearly every place you wouldn't expect to find them. Artifacts liberated during mining activities, found in Jurassic strata, the Wedge of Awood found deep in prehistoric sediments, or a doll machine pumped from depths untouched, or more importantly, undisturbed for many millions of years. Entombed, these remarkable things, just waiting for modern man to again show them the light of day. Ruins found in geographical locations, which have, geologically, proved by another academic field, as having been built, then subsequently submerged far before historical academic opinion on human origin, and indeed, human development timelines as a whole allows. A complete contradiction of conclusion, resulting from a blatant cover-up of the past. Additionally, these mentioned items, we believe, are likely a mere handful of examples found over the years, such as the iron mask we recently covered found deep within a coal mine by the lady who came forward with images and the testimony after her father, the finder of the artifacts passing, having kept his find secret. Yet another peculiar area of ancient curiosities, in contrast to being unearthed, were plunged into it. The most interesting of which, in our opinion, being that of the swords in the stones. The sword of Okonfo Onaki being one such artifact. The once mythical leader of the Ashanti people. As a symbol of its power, and to signify peace and unity among the Ashanti Empire. According to local history, the sword was plunged by him into the ground, this occurring some 300 years ago. He pronounced the sword to be immovable, and, bizarrely, it has indeed remained unmoved. There have been many attempts to liberate the sword, including well-known figures such as Muhammad Ali, who attempted to remove the sword in 1994. The sword has even been visited by the Queen of England in 1961, though whether she attempted to lift the sword is unknown. History is full of mysterious anomalies, which simply cannot be explained, the sword of Okomfo being one of them, as of which it is an artifact we find highly compelling.